Welcome to Bible 100 course on the Bible itself. And this is lesson two. Lesson one was recorded in August of 2022. So some time has delayed since now it is October of 23. A lot of other things have transpired and other stuff has been done, but now I'm back at it. Lesson two, the perfect, infallible, inerrant words of God. And your student objective is to conclude that the words, W-O-R-D-S, of the King James Bible are God's words the way God intended us to have them in the English language. So, introduction to this. You may feel free to look at other versions to compare notes on how they differ. By some chance, if you can read and write the Hebrew and the Greek, you might want to do that to also. You are to make a personal conclusion about the validity and accuracy of the words of the God you profess to believe in. Here is what some others believe about the Bible. From the Jehovah's Witness magazine Awake, quote, creationist, often say that the entire universe was created in six literal 24-hour days some 6,000 years ago. With teachings like this, they misrepresent the Bible. End of quote. From Reverend Moon's The Principle, Volume 4, Out of Chaos, Void, and Darkness, a period described as six days, 2 Peter 3, 8, we understood that these days were not actual 24-hour days. Six gradual periods, word, day, evening, and morning, cannot be interpreted in the usual sense, morning ideal for the creation, even God finished. Back to the Jehovah's Witness and their magazine, The Watchtower. Actually, God's name Jehovah appears nearly 7,000 times in ancient Bible manuscripts. However, some manuscripts, some translators, not manuscripts, my fault, have gone as far as to remove this name from their versions of the Bible. End of quote. A man named Canaan Shine, C H E Y N E, said, quote, I am myself one of those who hold the historical existence of the personage called Moses to be unproved and improbable. End of quote. Huxley, you may have heard of him, quote, The reason we jumped at the origin of the species was as the evidence amassed by Darwin was so intellectually compelling that science, scientific integrity required that we accept it as fact, end of quote. Quote, quote, foundations are being reinvestigated and the tree of life can scarcely grow because men are digging it up at its roots, and that is footnote 35 by Alexander McLaurin, Expositions of Holy Scripture, Volume 15 on the Hebrews, Grand Rapids, Eric Publications, 1944, on page 265. Genesis 14 from higher criticism. Quote, Do we not positively know that Babylon in the 22nd and 23rd century B.C. 
extended his rule to the Mediterranean, question mark. Assyriologist George Smith in 1871 shown that Arik, king of Eleazar, in verse 1 of Genesis 14, was a real king whom Hammurabi once defeated, end of quote. Continuing with higher criticism, quote, in Germany, the learned studies proper, i.e. philology, history, and theology, are almost exclusively in the hands of professional armchair scholars or professors, end quote. Crucial from Texas, the Word of God is its own tremendous witness to its own inspiration, end quote. Humanist, quote, proselytizers of a new faith, a religion of humanity, utilizing a classroom instead of a pulpit to convey humanist values in whatever subject they teach, end of quote. And that brings us to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Yea, hath God said, This could also be called the age of uh, innocence in theology. There will be remarks made about premillennial doctrine and covenant theology throughout the study. The word covenant is used in the authorized version 292 times. See the charts in Appendix A. So let us begin from Jack Owen. I have also noted that Jewish translators are anti-Semitic, but so are Christian translators anti-Semitic, or at least ignorant of Jewish idiom, customs, and culture. Hmm. Where's P? Quote, in recent years, believers have waged battles over the inspiration and authority authority of the word of God, end quote. Moses does not appear to have the scene until, appear on the scene until 1543 B.C. We have been taught that it was Moses who authorized the book of Genesis. There appears to be no written record of what transpired before Moses, except what Moses wrote. That being said, how do we know what the serpent said to Eve back about 4000 B.C.? What was the language? Hebrew, Aramaic, or Chaldean, or Serpentine? Above is the King's English from my work CD. The Hebrew is as below. You will see the Hebrew in your handout, Genesis 1, 1. So, do you have any idea of what was said? I don't think so, because I don't. We have no absolute way knowing if this Hebrew is the same as that handed down to Moses. Neither can we, logically speaking, have any assurance that the English says what we read. This is the philosophy of uh, doubt. What is the position of faith? Do you trust the source and resource of the authorized version or some other version? You need to study and decide. The translators of the authorized version did not honor the traditions of Rome. They rejected the Vaticanus manuscript. They did not deny the Trinity, nor did they downplay the deity of Jesus the Christ. From the book that Watching and Waiting, quote, the confusion is a doubting of God's word, quote, yea, hath God said, 
in Genesis 3.1. There was sown a seed that continues to germinate and bear fruit to this day. Roosevelt says the Bible is a historical book, but it has been kept from error by the Holy Ghost. Do you believe in the preservation after the inspiration of the Holy Ghost? Roman number two, Genesis six through nine, the covenant with Noah. From higher criticism, quote, the admiration which the everyday man has for the knowledge of languages is a curious psychological problem. Newton says, quote, it is a fearful thing to attack the authority of scripture. We might also say that it would be easier to think with the infidel that God had never given a revelation of his will than to suppose that after having given it, he had failed to watch over it by his providence and had allowed it to descend to us falsified and untrue. Continuing from higher criticism, quote, for a long time, the unsolved enigmas of hieroglyph and cuneiform, I may not pronounce all these words correctly, preserved us from the nightmare of ancient original philology. End of quote. Between 1611 and 1900, a flood of correctors entered the stage after learning the German higher criticism on God's word. Roman numeral three, Genesis 12, the covenant with Abraham. You may look at Galatians 3, 6, Romans 8, 36, Luke 16, 2. And we look at Exodus, Moses, and the law. You can add to those Exodus 34, 27, and Deuteronomy 4, 2. Here's a note on the Chronological Bible. It places this verse at about 1423 B.C. It is set following Deuteronomy 1, verses 1 to 5. Deuteronomy 5 follows it. That makes it rather confusing. Now, what did Moses have in mind when he gave us, or gave Israel, verse 2? Certainly it was not all of Genesis through Deuteronomy. They had not all been written when he said what he said. Moses could not have been speaking of the Psalms, or the Proverbs, or the Gospels, or the book of Revelation. I suppose then, that we too are to exempt from the necessity of worrying about adding or subtracting from the rest of the book. There are some who tell us that this applies to all the Word of God. Is that in English or Hebrew? The Living Bible puts it this way, not add other laws. The Cottage Bible says that your scriptures are not corrupted as to the errors of printers and transcribers, the editor of this Bible, in comparing different editions of our authorized translation, has found many slight variations in spelling, in pointing, and especially in the italics, but none of any consequence to the interpretation. End quote. You can look at Numbers 11, verses 31 and 32. Crucial from Texas says, actually, the Holy Scriptures say that God blew the quail into the wilderness from the Nile Valley, flying above the face of the earth about two cubits. End of quote. In other words, he goes to the original language to correct the English that he, thus he contradicts his belief in the book he holds in his hand, which he says, the words 
the book, the Bible that Jesus loved is the Bible that I hold in my hand. Contradictory himself. See Luke 25, verses 27, 44, and 45. Again, quote, the Greek text of the authorized version is the text of the Church of Antioch East, not West or South, and this is the text used in Acts 11, 16. See Deuteronomy 6, 3-9, and Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 21. And we will pause there and pick it up at higher criticism. Continuing with Bible 100 on the Bible. And we're continuing with lesson two, and we're picking up where we left at higher criticism. Quote, the Pentateuch has been analyzed into countless layers or fragments raked together by someone or two or X number of redactors from the writings between 1400 to 1200 B.C. Quote, if the Pentateuch is a cento or patchwork from numerous authors, uh, we cannot at the present period possibly go back as far as the real, the original authors, in that we do not possess a Pentateuch con containing compilations from the original authors, but only a Pentateuch containing versions of compilations from compilations compiled by other compilations, uh, in quote. <laughs> See Deuteronomy 18, verses 21 and 22. Kennedy, we have not yet seen the full result of humanism in the United States. We are still coasting on the values derived from our rich Judeo-Christian heritage." End quote. Conclusion of Lesson 2. In this lesson you have heard from the Jehovah's Witnesses, Reverend Moon, Higher Criticism, Criswell, Worsby, and others. This lesson covered Genesis to Deuteronomy. What you will do now is review a list of verses and write what they say about God's words. This is assignment number two. BI 100, what the student is to do with the list of verses is to read them in the English authorized King James Version and write down what each verse has to say about the Word of God. And that will be with your student handout. We go then to lesson number three for BI 100 Bible. In the history of the kings, Joshua to the Chronicles. Student objective, to gain a further understanding from biblical criticism and the various views of those who profess themselves as Bible critics and to see the words God hath spoken. Introduction, the history of the kings in the promised land. Higher criticism, quote, the Old Testament consists of various layers of old, young, and fabricated documents written by various post-Mosaic Hebrews such as the Eloist, designated E, the Deuteronomist, designated D, respectively, and was finally deliberately harmonized by the priests about 444 B.C. Ezra and Nehemiah having the greatest share of the codification. End of quote. The oracles. 
The books of Kings and Chronicles in the Bible categorize the Jewish kings not according to their economics or politics, but according to their manner of worship. End of quote. Roman numeral one, Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. Joshua 1, 1. Quote, the Lord, Jehovah, spake unto Joshua. Verse 7, observe the law. King James, Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9 says, I command thee. Joshua 5, 2, quote, The Lord said unto Joshua, and in Joshua 5, 13 and 14, And he said, Nay, but as captain of the Lord, let me do that again, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and in worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Are you listening? Verses 2 of chapter 6, The Lord said unto Joshua, Chapter 7, verses 10 and 11, Israel hath sinned. Verse 8, 1, the Lord said. Verse 8, 34, read all the words of the law. 9, 14, and ask not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. 10, 8, and 13, the Lord said, and the sun stood still. Verse 20, chapter 20, verse 1, the Lord also spake unto Joshua, cities of refuge. Judges to one and an angel of the Lord. Chapter 4, verse 8. Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go. Deborah 6, 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto Gideon and said, 13, 3. The angel of the Lord appeared to the woman, mother of Samson, and said, Ruth. There is no direct speaking of God in the book of Ruth, but clearly Naomi was a follower of the Lord, which led to the conversion of Ruth and her marriage to Boaz. Roman numeral two, Samuel, Kings and Chronicles. Samuel one, Verses 23 of chapter 1. Quote, Only the Lord established his word. Quote, Hannah and Samuel. Chapter 2, verse 27. Quote, Man of God unto Eli, thus saith the Lord. Quote, 3, 4. Quote, And that the Lord called Samuel. Quote, 8, 7. Quote, Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the people, end quote. King Saul, 15.2. Quote, Lord of hosts, I remember Amalek, quote. 16.1, quote, Lord said unto Samuel, I have rejected Saul, I have a king, quote. 23.2, the Lord said unto David, go and smite. Second Samuel 2.1, David inquired of the Lord, shall I go up? And the Lord said, Go. 5.23 And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up. 7.5 Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord. Quote. That's to not to build the temple. 12.7 Nathan to David, Thou art the man. 23.2 23, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue." End quote. Kennedy says, where religion has no influence will of necessity bring about meaninglessness, lawlessness, and despair. 
Such conditions often spawn a totalitarian state instituted to restore order by brute force. End quote. First Kings two three. To keep the charge of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. First Kings 3.10 And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. 1 Kings 6.11 And the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, and we go to 1 Kings 6.12, Concerning this house which thou art build, in building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my, I keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my words with thee, which I spake unto David thy father. 1 Kings 18.21 McLaurin says, Word of the original, how long do you hobble all along upon both knees? Resting now upon one and then the other. If the Lord be God, then plain common sense follow him. If Baal, then follow him. From so much for McLaurin's opinion. Second Kings 18.14 Crucial says the difference between measurements between one country and another is discovered in archaeology findings. Supposed errors are erased when different cultures are examined. End quote. 2 Kings 22, verses 8, 11, 13, and 16. And 2 Kings 23, 3, verse 16, and verse 24. And 2 Chronicles 34, verses 19 to 21, and verse 30. From higher criticism, you cannot have a right view of the text authorship and date of saying the book of kings and yet continue to have a wrong historical view of the events and institutions of the period of kings end quote see Nehemiah, Nehemiah 8 verses 7 and 8 and Job 23 verse 12 are you keeping up with the views and what the Lord says. You'll notice that I only quote a portion of the verses. This is to call to your attention that this is what God is saying. And then you have to look at the context to get the concept of why and what it is that God is exactly saying to whomever he is saying it. And then you have to meditate on that to see what God might have to say to you. Roman numeral three, words from King David and Solomon. Pardon my itching nose. The first verse is Psalm 2, 2. From the Oxford translation. Quote, the word anointed in Hebrew is literally Messiah, one of the titles of an Israelite king. After the extinction of Hebrew monarchy, this became a name for the ideal king of a future hope for restoration, and his psalm was reinterpreted accordingly. Psalm 2-7 from Oxford, You are my son, begotten you. A formula of adoption whereby the king became God's son. 
see 2 Samuel 7, 14, Psalm 89, verses 26 and 27, Acts 13, 33, and Psalms 12, 6 and 7. Again, from the Oxford, the chair which is perhaps implied in the use of us commends reliance upon the promise just made and prays that it may soon be carried out, end quote. The Chronological Bible places these verses at about 1029 B.C. This is about 400 years after Moses. It is set between 1 Samuel 18 and 19. Again, the question is called for, what did David, assumed author, have in mind when he said the words of the Lord. That is what the English says. Was in the mind of David all of our current Old Testament the word? Or just that part that had been written up to his writing? Or maybe all David was talking about was the law of Moses. Certainly, it could not apply to the New Testament. Your decision, what do you believe? The Living Bible puts verse 6 this way, promise is sure. The Revised Standard puts verse 7 this way, do thou, O Lord, protect us, guard us from this generation. Kind of the opposite of King James. Verse 7, and we will stop there, for the Cottage Bible has an opinion. Continuing with B100 Bible, and we were at Psalm 12, verse 7 in the Cottage Bible. Quote, the LXX rendered this verse as follow. Add quote, Thou, Lord, will guard us and preserve us from this generation and forever. In the second quote, not only from this wicked race, but from every evil work unto thy heavenly kingdom. And that was added by T. Scott. Again, from watching and waiting, the Lord will not alter his truth, and it is our duty in these days to hold fast to the truth of God. End quote. Higher criticism. The fault of the higher criticism lies in an utter misconception of the matter at issue. End quote. Psalm 19, 7 through 14. From Oxford, verse 9, fear, many scholars emit to word. See Psalm 119, verse 11. Psalm 51, 18 to 19, Oxford, a later edition, designed to modify the anti-sacrificial spirit of the preceding verses and to adopt the psalm to liturgical use. End quote. Psalm 56, 4 and 10. How can you praise the Lord in his word if you do not have his word? Psalm 78, 25. Oxford, quote. The manna is fancifully interpreted as the bread of the angels. End quote. Psalm 104, 2 to 4. Oxford, quote. The creation of the heavens. The account is much more mythological than that of Genesis chapter 1, end quote. Psalm 106, 48, Oxford. A doxology, no original part of the psalm. Marking the end of book 4 of the Psalter, see 4113, Praise the Lord has been illogically attached to this verse rather than preceding verse. And they say, see the note at the beginning of Psalm 105. 
on page 740 of the Oxford book. Psalm 107, 11, and Psalm 119, 1 to 3, and Psalm 109, 4. Of the oracles, quote, the Hebrew original contains only two words, I pray. Not even I am prayer, prayer, which would establish a relationship between myself and the prayer. End quote. From the Watchtower, quote, the verb walk connotes walk of life or lifestyle, says the New Interpreter's Bible. End quote. Psalm 16, 7, Watchtower, quote, during the nights my kidneys have corrected me. End quote. Psalm 31, 5, the oracles, quote, the Bible calls the creator the God of truth. There is a legend that the blood that flowed from Jesus on Golgotha formed the Hebrew words, Aneha Emet, I am the truth. We can know the truth, end quote. Mark 12, 36, Psalm 110, 1, Criswell. Mark, he quoted Psalm 110.1. David in the Holy Ghost, see how he makes the Bible the very word of the very breath of God. End quote. From Oxford, the Hebrew text is unusually corrupt and the interpretation of many details extremely difficult. End quote. Psalm 119.3 and 4 and 160. Oxford. Quote, the length of this psalm is a result of its unusual and highly artificial structure. End quote. Watchtower. The Byzantine, or Byzantine translation renders the last part of verse 4, quote, that day his goodwill is a total loss. End quote. Criswell, there are no errors in the manuscripts of God. End quote. He then quotes the English to prove his Hebrew point. Psalm 113, 6 and 7, from the Watchtower. Quote, condescending means that he bends down to see or that he is humbling himself to look. From today's English version, Young's little or literal translation of the Holy Bible. Higher criticism. The Lollardist troubled the minds and conscience of many people who failed to grasp the emptiness of their methods in history. See Proverbs 2, 1 to 6, Proverbs 19, 27, Proverbs 22, 21, Proverbs 23, 12, and Proverbs 23, 20, and 21. And then Deuteronomy 21, 20. Watchtower, quote, what do the Christian Greek scriptures say about this topic? To which I ask, which Greek New Testament? Nestles, Meskers, hmm? Westcott and Hort, LXX, Vaticanus, Sinaiticus, Byzantine, ad infinitum. Higher criticism. Quote, it is as impossible to criticize text, authorship, and period of the various books of the Bible by the aid of purely philological methods of research as it is to criticize facts of physics by the aid of merely mathematical methods of investigation, in quote. Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6. The Chronological Bible places these verses at about 961 B.C. Proverbs is set between 1 Kings 4 and 1 Kings 11. Once again, the question, what did Solomon have in mind when he said every word of God? The law, his father David, the Gospels, Romans, can these verses in the English be applied to what we call the whole Bible? 
Is there a need for clarity from the original authors? Their writings no longer exist. They long ago rotted away and disappeared. Proverbs 31, 1. Oxford, quote, King Lemuel is unidentified. The text is possibly corrupt, end quote. Ecclesiastes 2, verses 18 and 19, Watchtower. One version says it doesn't make sense, end quote. And I would say that the Jehovah's Witness don't make much sense either. See Ecclesiastes 8, 4 and 12, 10. Conclusion to Lesson Plan 3. In this lesson, the word from Joshua to Solomon has been covered. Again, the experts have offered their opinions at various stages of the discussion. Now it is time for you to take God at his word and do your homework assignment for lesson three. God bless. What the student is to do with this list of verses is to read them in the English authorized King James Version and write down what each verse has to say about the Word of God. And there are quite a few verses in this list for you to study and meditate upon. So, what next? We go to Bible 100, Lesson Plan 4. In the words of the prophets, student objective to assimilate what the prophets have to say about God's words. And notice how I emphasize the S at the ending of some words. So did you get the distinction that I'm not talking about a word or the whole word of God, but words? Uh, introduction. In this lesson, all the prophets' writings will be given consideration in what they had to say about God's words. We will, of course, be using the English. Roman numeral one. The age of the prophets to Malachi. Higher criticism, quote, the inquisitorial method of the higher criticism allows them to cast doubts on anything or on anyone to prove or disprove anything they like, end quote. Isaiah 6, 13, Oxford. The last part of the verse is obscure and textually corrupt and perhaps should be restored to read, quote, like the terebin of the goddess and the oak ashura cast out of the pillar of the high places, that is, like the destroying furnishings of a pagan high place, end quote. Are you confused yet? Isaiah 7, 7. Isaiah 22, 15. Isaiah 28, 16. Isaiah 29, 22. Isaiah 30, 15. Isaiah 23, 15 to 18. And again, we turn to the book by Oxford. Hope. A very late edition, perhaps 3rd century, compared the restoration in the late oracle of Jeremiah 48, 47, and 49, verses 6 and 39. And then we go to Criswell, who says, quote, Since of the more than 6,000 verses of prophecy in the Bible, about 3,000 have already been fulfilled, we may conclude that the other 3,000 verses of prophecy are going to be fulfilled in the years to come. In both. I think we can agree with that for a change. Isaiah 37, 6, verse 21 and verse 33. 
chapter 38, 1 and 5, chapter 42, 5, chapter 43, 14 and 16, chapter 44, verse 2, 6 and 24. Then we go to a critic by the name of Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. Quote, higher criticism, teaching that a man can tamper with the word of God and escape punishment or spiritual blindness. End quote. Let's see Isaiah again, 45, 1, 11, 14, 18, and 48, 17, and 49, 7, 8, and 22. Isaiah, 48, 1. I like Isaiah. One of my courses is on Isaiah. You should take that. Isaiah 48, 1 from Oxford. This, quote, this chapter summarizes the first section of 2nd Isaiah, which it, con which it concludes. How strange. I only find in my Bible one Isaiah. Hmm. There's a 1st and 2nd Kings, a 1st and 2nd Chronicles, 1st and 2nd Samuel. There's a 1st and 2nd Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy. But I've never heard of a second Isaiah. I only see one. Isaiah 53, Criswell, quote, written over 750 years before Christ, reads as though a man had stood by the cross of the Son of God himself, end quote. Isaiah 50, verse 1, 51, verse 22, 52, verse 3, 4, 56, verse 1, 66, 1, and 12. You have a lot of scriptures to look up and read, don't you? How many other times did the Lord say something in Isaiah? Jeremiah 10, 1, Oxford, quote, This is a later elaboration of a now lost oracle by Jeremiah, if it is to be ascribed to him, end quote. Uh, Jeremiah 11, 3 and 8. Jeremiah 15, 16, Jeremiah 23, 9 and 30, and 34 and following. Again from Oxford. This is a later commentary on verse 33, which is misunderstood, concentrating on the phrase, the burden of the Lord, it is theologically non germanic Sounds more like they are a maniac. Jeremiah 32, that's 30, verse 2. Jeremiah 36, verse 2. Isaiah 40, verse 8. Criswell, quote, To know what I have said, one must read the original Hebrew text, end quote. Which, again, contradicts himself from saying what he holds in his hand, the word of God. And we will pause there and pick it up at Isaiah 40, verse 22. Picking up with our discussion of the Bible in BI 100, we are in Lesson Plan 4 and at Isaiah 40, verse 22. Upon which Criswell says, quote, Now it is just such decrepancies in translations that seem baffling. Isaiah lived around 750 B.C., and there was not a man in the earth before him nor after him for countless generations who believed that the earth was round. End quote. Ezekiel 14.20 Oxford, quote, Ezekiel's reference to Daniel, however, suggests the Canaanite D-A-N hyphen E-L, not hyphen, but asterisk, D-L. So spelled in Ezekiel also, rather that the, than the Daniel of the Bible. There are undoubtedly cycles of literature associated with these patriarchs of which we now know a very little, end quote. So Daniel was in Daniel, he was Daniel. Uh, 
according to Oxford. Ezekiel 17, 17, Oxford, quote, Pharaoh has been added either through editorial revision or scribal error, read, and not with a mighty army, we see, in quotes, Nebuchadnezzar deal with him, end of quote. Ezekiel 26.1, again from Oxford, quote, V1 should perhaps be read the twelfth year with the Septuagint, end quote. Ezekiel 33.21, Oxford, quote, read the eleventh for twelfth. Perhaps these two verses are unrelated in this context. You have a lot of context reading to check and see what's what. Daniel 8, 26 and 27, Oxford, quote, since Daniel is pictured as being in Susa in 552 BC, and the version concerns events of 164, the account is to be preserved for that time, for naturally Daniel did not understand it. End quote. Daniel 12, 4 and 9, and Amos 8, 11, higher criticism. Quote, the theologian may say, give me Amos and Hosea, and I will psychologically compel you to admit the authenticity of the Pentateuch. Amos 9.3, Oxford, quote, serpent, a mythological dragon inhabiting the Dead Sea, quote. Ob Obadiah 1, 1 and 2, Frozy. The word rumor in the KJV is a poor choice of words uh, since the Hebrew word indicates doctrine, report, or tidings. End quote. Higher criticism. Training in ancient languages has cast the professor mind in a mold little suited to historical investigation. End quote. Criswell, Diodorus Siculus, the Greek historian, inadvertently described the destruction of great Nineveh as a exactly according to the prophecy of Nahum, end quote. Higher criticism, quote, whatever the higher critics may know about the language of the Old Testament, they, most, they know most inadequately the subject matter of the Old Testament, end quote. Ruckman, the part of any church that leads to humanism Socialism is never that segment that believes the King James Bible is the Word of God. Quote. Zechariah 7-7, seven, seven, Zechariah 8-9, Zechariah 12-10. Quote, the Hebrew word for me has been changed to him. So is it me or him? Is it I or thou? Roman numeral two, the age of silence, Malachi to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Conclusion of this chapter. In this lesson four, the prophets have been covered in thus saith the Lord. Did the Lord say anything to you? The critics were also allowed to give their understanding as you do your homework, see how the Lord speaks through the prophets. Simon, what the student is to do with this list of verses, as before, is to read them in the English authorized King James Version and write down what each verse has to say about the Word of God. B100 Bible Lesson Plan 5 God's Words in the Gospels Student Objective to see what Jesus 
has to say about the word. Hmm. Criswell. When we had finished the course of the New Testament, he said, Young gentlemen, you have studied Christ himself, the whole Christ, all the Christ. End quote. From the principle, quote, at Jesus' time, God worked in a new way by giving the gospel on a level appropriate for the spirituality of the people of that age, end quote. Dr. Rugman, quote, its authority is such that it needs no protective scheme to propagate its message, end quote. Galatians 3, 16. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Galatians 3, 18. Matthew 5, 18. Matthew 19, 4. John 10, 35. Matthew 19, 4 and 5. Matthew 22, 29. And verses 42 to 45. In chapter 23, verse 35, Mark 7, 15, Luke 24, 44, John 5, 39, John 10, 34 to 36, John 7, 16, John 12, 49, John 6, 63, John 8, verses 26, 28, and 40, and then Deuteronomy 18, 18, and Luke 4, 18. Criswell says, quote, Christ's view of the scriptures must be the view of his servants. Quote, Matthew 6, 9. From the principle, quote, we do not mean that God is located in the sky. Hmm. Matthew 6, 13. From Oxford, quote, on the basis of David's prayer in 1 Chronicles 29, 11 to 13, the early church added an appropriate concluding doxology, see note, for the evil one. Other authorities, some ancient, add ends dumb form. Sounds to me that's in dumb form. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In other words, these words were not part of the original prayer. They were added here or there or everywhere. Matthew 12, 40, Oxford, quote, whale, sea monster, watchtower, according to the most reliable manuscripts of the Christian Greek scriptures, Jesus' model prayer ends with the words, deliver us from the wicked one, end quote. Mark 7, 13, Criswell, quote, the Lord Jesus himself distinctly asserted that the law of Moses is the word of God, end quote. Matthew 13, 18 and 22, watchtower. Quote, the Greek word here rendered choke means strangle completely. Quote, see Matthew 15, 1 through 9 and Matthew 16, 21 to 23. If you are choked, I reckon you've been strangled. Or if you've been strangled, I reckon you're going to choke and then croak. Pardon my humor. Watching and waiting. Quote, all who try to correct God do as Peter on this occasion. Quote, higher criticism. Quote, one may prove that this saying of Jesus is Buddhistic and the other is taken from the Zen Avesta. What can never be deduced is the transcendental personality of Jesus. End quote. Matthew 18, 11, Oxford, quote, other ancient authorities add verse 11. They left it out of the text. Matthew 23, 14, Oxford, left verse 14 out of this translation. Matthew 23, 35, Oxford, quote, son of Berechiah, probably mistakenly added to the text of Matthew at an early date because of confusion over 
which Zechariah was meant. Mark eleven twenty six Oxford left verse twenty six out of this translation. Mark twelve twenty six twenty seven and twenty four. Criswell hope oh, the Lord bases his doctrine his teaching on immorality and the resurrection of the dead on the tense of a verb in the word of God, I am the God of Abraham. End quote. The translators of the King James Bible were, quote, humble, God-fearing, Pope-hating, Bible-believing men. Mark 16, 19 through 20, Oxford says, was added in the second century. Here's another list of verses for you. Luke 3, 4. Luke 11, 9 to 13. Luke 18, 1. Jeremiah 33, 3. Mark 11, 22 to 24. John 16, 23. 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15. Luke 24, 27, 44, and 46. Luke 18, 19, and 20. Oxford says, quote, The order of the commandments, varying from the Hebrew scripture, follows the ancient Greek translation of the Old Testament. That would mean the LXX. Criswell, quote, After his resurrection, that he set his seal on the whole Old Testament. Luke 14, 23. Criswell, quote, The great corroboration of and attestation and proof for the ministry of our Lord he found in the Holy Scriptures themselves. Quote, Luke 22, 43 and 44. Oxford says these verses were not part of the original. Luke 23, 34. Oxford says, quote, other ancient authorities omit. Verse 34. John 7. 53 to 811 of Oxford, most ancient authorities omit a whole section. John 11, 49 to 50, from the oracles, quote, Caiaphas did not mean to serve the truth. His words were correct, even prophetic, end of quote. John 14, 6, the oracles, if one wishes to know truth, he must know life too. If he wishes to fulfill the demands of truth, he must be attentive to the demands of life as well. John 14, 26, Criswell, quote, We have Christ's own authority that for it that in the apostolic records we have not the apostolic recollection of what Jesus said, but the Holy Spirit's recollection of what Jesus said. End quote. John 16, 12, and 13. Kennedy, quote, God's truth is true for everyone, and the subjective rejection of somebody else's truth does not apply to God. End quote. Conclusion of this lesson five. You have heard the voices of the critics, the pros and cons, on the words from the four Gospels. Now it is time for you to do your homework and come to your own understanding of the words of Jesus from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and make your conclusion of what Jesus said about the Word of God. And we will start it there, stop there, and pick it up in Lesson Plan 6, beginning at the book of Acts through Jude.